All right, we've got uh, Trey in Atlanta. Thanks for waiting. Hi, how's it going? Pretty good. Good. I uh, want to say first, I love the show. It's been really helpful to me, so thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I grew up a very conservative, somewhat fundamentalist Christian in the heart of the Bible Belt. And over the last few years, I'd like to think I've progressed far out of that mindset. And um, I do consider myself a theist. However, God is not this man in the sky to me that pops his head in when we do or say the right things. I don't know what he is, but to me, God is just the thing behind the thing behind the thing, however far you carry that back up. Well, if you, don't, um, if you don't know what God is, and you have this really vague notion that it's a thing behind a thing behind a thing, why would you believe it? I mean, I don't well, know. That was, how can you believe something that you don't I, even know what it is? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's the reason I was calling, because the thing that keeps me believing in a God of some sort are strange and meaningful coincidences, for back of, lack of better words, that have happened in my life and other people's that keep me, I mean, I can't say any other way, but feeling like there's something out there that cares. So what kind of strange, meaningful coincidences? Well, I've got two. One's very personal and one's very hilarious. Um, I'll start with the personal one. When I was in college, I became aware of a form of an anxiety disorder that I had and um, started having panic attacks for the first time in my life and saw some doctors and was told I should take medicine by some and not by others and just not knowing what to do, I guess, gave me even more anxiety. And so because of the mindset that I had at the time, I thought the best thing I could do was to go lock myself in a little study room inside of my university library and pray. And when I was praying, I felt this urge to look at a specific passage in the Bible um, that I didn't know what it was, but I looked it up anyway, and it happened to be a verse about anxiety, which seemed extremely meaningful, obviously, at the time, because I, I wouldn't have been able to tell you at the time that's what the verse was. And so it had a major impact on me in that moment. And then later that day, a friend of mine from out of town called and told me that he had a family member pass in a nearby town, and he'd love to see me. So I hopped in my car, and I hopped on the highway, and as I was driving, I turned on a radio station, and there was a preacher, I, well, not immediately. I was listening to some music, and then I got out of range, and so I started changing the channels, and a preacher was on the radio station preaching about that exact same verse about anxiety. And then um, through another weird, strange of events, I almost had a, a car accident on the way back from seeing my friend, and did a complete 360 off the interstate when I, not interstate, it was a, it was a, I'll spare the details, but I almost went head on with a, a large truck and um, never had panic attacks again. And I'm, I'm leaving out some really weird details that involve the band Pearl Jam as well. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm trying to keep it short because I get annoyed on your behalf when I hear people call in with too many details. Um, and so that would be one of a bunch of experiences in my life. Okay. So that I, I realize can't, can only really be evidence for me. Yeah. Just experiences. Well, I would never expect anyone to believe in God because of my experiences, I guess. Yeah. So uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that humans are pattern seeking creatures. And yeah. so we try to find a pattern even when there's not one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, I, I can't, I can't, um, you know, obviously offer an explanation for why this particular verse would pop into your head. Um, right. But, you know, you said that you were raised in um, a very fundamentalist religion. And so is it possible yeah. that at some point in your life, 
uh, you heard that um, someone preaching about that ber that verse or talking about it. Yeah. And in a moment of stress, when you were, you know, sitting here, in, you know, kind of deeply contemplating your situation, this popped into your head. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure that I subconsciously could have been aware of that passage in a way that yeah. made me go to it. There, there's, um, a, there's several potential problems here, and one okay. of them is that you're talking about Bible verses. Does that mean I, that, that does that mean that you think the Christian God is the God that you believe in? Because I mean, the, you, you talked about it as the thing behind the thing behind the thing. Yeah, but no, it there's no tie for, that to me. Okay, so there's no tie between the thing behind the thing behind the thing and a passage like Philippians four, six, and seven, which is right. Potentially, the, verse, the, by the way. that was the verse. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's don't. Yep. I, I had to look it up. It's not like I have all of this memorized, but I I knew roughly what you talked about. Uh, yeah. But but those two verses, by the way, Philippians four, six, and seven. It's not unlikely that this would be something that would pop into your head, or something that a sermon would be about, because it says, "Do not be You're anxious right. about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present right. yourself for request to God." And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, with God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's, right. I mean, yeah, that's, that's like a go-to verse. But the thing to remember is the Bible talks about human experience, and it talks about spiritual experience, and it has a bunch of things that can easily be interpreted as good advice or sage advice or interesting advice. That's the reason yeah. why people go to it. So here's a test you can do. You can type random Bible verse into a Google search, and there's a website, uh, sandersweb.net, that will, you know, there's a PHP script that will just pop up a random verse and see how many times you can find a way to interpret the verse that pops up in a way that is meaningful to you. For example, if I just go there and hit refresh, let's see what the first thing that pops up is. And it yeah. is God, this is 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, and who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Now, does that say anything specifically about anxiety? No, so it's not going to be used as, as much of a significant coincidence. But I'm pretty sure that I could uh, devise a little interpretation and, and mini-sermon about that that does relate to anxiety. Yeah, and, you know, it doesn't, this experience didn't, or at least now, doesn't affirm the authority of the Bible to me as much as it just causes me to wonder if that's what God used, because that was what I was raised with, and it's the tool that I had. It's the way that he met me in that moment. So, so maybe what you're and arguing for, up, maybe, what, maybe you should pull up other holy texts, and if you find coincidences there, what, what you would end up doing, I suspect, is saying, oh, there's a God that isn't a part of any of these individual religions, but he's directing yeah. me to these quotes in different mm -hmm. religions because they're particularly meaningful to me at the moment. Yeah, what, I guess so. What if that's not the case? What if you are reaching out to things that you either were familiar with or, upon reading it, given the predisposition to think that a God is trying to tell you something, you are going to do everything in your power to interpret it that way. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm open to that. Um, I guess it's just... So at what the, point At what point should you actually believe that a God is sending you messages? Um, I don't know. I mean... Then that, that seems I'm, to be the thing to find out. Yeah, not you know. I mean, it's. I, I get what I get your your concern and where you're at uh, in this. Hey, I just I've seen too many coincidences and there are things that were important to me, and it seems like that God is telling me something becomes a more reasonable answer. The problem is you have no way of demonstrating either that it is true, that it's possible, right or that it's probable, and you have no way of right. evaluating the probability that God is sending you messages compared to the probability that you're sending yourself messages or that you're interpreting things yeah. this way. So if you can't distinguish right. between the two, then there can't possibly be a justification for believing it. But it gets even worse. 
And it gets worse because while you can't compare the probabilities to reach the reasonable conclusion, the, and I, I lost my train of thought here for a second, the issue, <laughs> the issue for this is I can't tell the difference between when I'm interpreting things meaningfully on my own or if a God's sending me messages. But let's assume for a second that a God is sending me messages. Let's assume that the conclusion that you've, yeah. you're leaning towards is in fact the case. What the hell kind of God is it that sits back and maybe picks out a verse in some random holy text to direct you to rather than actually communicating with you directly and offering you the help that you're trying to get? And leaves you in this position of doubt. What, what God would want you in this position of doubt to say, maybe God is sending me this message, or maybe I'm interpreting it this way on my own. Any God worthy of worship, any God who actually cares about you, should at least be encouraging you in a way that is clear that he's sending you the message. If I've got a message for you, I'm not going to hem yeah. and haw and, and vaguely suggest that you should go interpret what my message is, especially if I know that you can yeah. get it wrong. It would have to be a God who just counted on me to assume and just kind of, without being able to demonstrate it, decide that's what's going on and keep moving in that direction. Which I and I get the fallacy in that way of thinking too. I mean, that's that's what I wrestle with because I have a number of these stories in my life that feel meaningful and, and not only meaningful, but like I would say helped me become happier and or a better person in some way. And so because they're so personal, it's, it's hard to just completely let go as well. And I, I think that's what I'm exploring is, yeah, what kind of God is so cryptic? Do you think that he deals with me? I mean, I've probably prayed for kids to not starve to death as well. Yeah. You know, and that, that hasn't happened. Yeah. Do you think that there are secular books that you could possibly read where you could also find things that make you yes. happier and make you better? Okay. A hundred percent. And, and to me, it's not the book. It's the fact that it happened at the right time, at the right place, yep. in the right moment. And that's significant to me. And, you know, I hear a lot of other people with these kinds of stories. And it's, you know, I, I enjoy getting in debates, especially with people that are more religious. And I like to poke holes in their books and whatnot. But I, I never know how to approach someone who has a story that's just personal, where um, uh, something that doesn't really, uh, it's not like the laws of nature changed for God to speak to them. It's just, they feel like he did. And I don't know how to, I was just curious how you would react to that or like what you would say. There's plenty of people who think um, that because, there's plenty of people who think they've gotten message from, messages from God. And yet these messages are conflicting. Oh yeah. So how do yeah. we, t how do we possibly tell who's got it right? If anybody. Yeah. That's a great question. Great question. Um, well, yeah, that's it. I mean, the other story was uh, is a hilarious one. I don't know if you know about the the famous Tim Tebow three John three sixteen game, where he decided randomly to to write John three sixteen on his eye black, and then that game ended up breaking a bunch of records, and he threw for three hundred and sixteen yards, and he possessed the ball for an average of 31.6 seconds, and he also averaged 3.16 yards rushing, and I think there were two others. I mean, even the sportscasters were, like, freaked out, like, what the heck is going on? Mm -hmm. And then John 316 was the most searched thing on Google that day, and, I mean, you can imagine how Tim Tebow interpreted that. Yeah, how many um, other games did Tim Tebow write a scripture on his eyes and absolutely suck? Yeah. There, there's a reason that <laughs> well, he's that currently the doing the only one. There's a reason that he's currently doing the baseball. Career. Yeah, God really yeah. wanted Tim Tebow to win. Hey, yeah, by the way, look up look up that game and see what the odds makers were predicting on the score of that game, and and that then maybe you can determine yeah. like if they were predicted well, to did, lose by I forty did fact points. Check that one. I did fact check that one, and that's why it, it stuck with me because all the stats that in that story were true, and and they were, they only existed because he actually broke records and performed in a very unusual way. Yeah. Um, and so when somebody I has a good it, day. Saying, like, God, what, 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 what if Tim, had, what if Tim had had a lucky rabbit's foot in his pocket? Um, uh, he would have gotten a hat trick or is that hockey? That's hockey. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> good, good, good yeah. try. Hockey or soccer. But, 
Well, All right, anyway, thanks, Trey. I appreciate I, the call. I, I appreciate your time. Keep it up. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, it's a coincidence. Uh, I get it. I, I mean, I, I understand. People look around and they see something, and it just seems so incredibly unlikely that these events would come. But they happen all the time, and you hear the stories about them all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. And what kind of God operates on, you know, oh, we're, hey, let me conspire to make these things work together. Yeah. And by the way, what does that say about us? Are we just puppets where this God is moving us well, around? Yeah, and it's like, you know, it's almost like it's a game. It's like, oh, I'll throw this out there and see if they pick up on the significance of this. I've got know? the most important yeah. message that anybody could ever have about how to gain eternal life. And instead, I'm going to wait until you're suffering from anxiety. Yeah. And then I'm going to make you remember a verse that eases your mind a little bit because yeah. that's the most effective way of. Yeah. yeah. I, I could have eliminated the anxiety just up front, but no, I'll, I'll make you suffer for it. I'm going to let Tim Tebow break some records while he's got John 316. Hey, have you ever watched a football game where somebody didn't have a John 316 poster? I mean,. Why don't we go back to every record yeah. that's ever been broken, look through the footage for that game, and see if we can find a John 316 there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I understand. People, people get this feeling. Oh, it just couldn't possibly be coincidence. Yeah.